You were looking for your faster bullet. You were looking for the youngest. Hello, Laura. <laughs> Thank you for being here. This is so fun. Thanks for having me. Here good we are. Seeing you. I haven't seen you in a minute. How's life? I know. Really good. You good. look well. What are we drinking? Today, we are going to drink the good stuff. <laughs> it is literally the good stuff. Yeah, okay. this is uh, Templeton rye. The uh, recipe I got for you is very simple. All right, all right. I like, uh, I like you easy. You need one heaping scoop of ice. <laughs> okay. And Voila. then. I like you just pop it open just oh, like so. Okay. I, I heard the sound. That made a good sound. And and pour. What we have here is Templeton Rye on the rocks, <laughs> as served by Ryan Parker. Do we have to do anything else? That's it. I might want to let the uh, ice mellow a wee okay. bit. Okay. But we're here at the Artifice, and when mm -hmm, I'm at the Artifice, mm -hmm. I drink whiskey. Cheers. Cheers. Salud. So good to see you. Good to see you. You know. That's delicious. It's really good. It's terrible. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love it. Actually. No, no, no. It's very good. Um, what else about it? I think I heard something. This was uh, the the uh, drink choice of uh, Al Capone during the Prohibition. Okay. And uh, you know, this was known as the good stuff. I think that was a something <laughs> the marketers added later on, though, after the case. Just marketing people. The marketing people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know uh, you've been dealing with a lot of marketing lately. How's that mm, going? It's good. It's good. <laughs> but you, so what? What's okay. happening? Uh, it's an exciting time right now, actually. Yeah. You caught me in the middle of an exciting week. I like that. Uh, right now, I'm in the middle of taking over a new music venue. Downtown Amazing. Las Vegas. Okay. It's gonna be uh, the bunkhouse. It's been we're gonna be reopening in the middle of November. Also, concurrently, I'm in uh, the studio with a local band called The Killers. Yeah, the lo the small local band. They've had a from wee Las bit Vegas. of uh, success. So right. we are in the studio right now, and we're working on a new Christmas song. Amazing. And uh, today is Thursday. On Monday, we will be shooting a video. Okay. So we're going straight from. Uh, last night I was in the studio to Monday we'll be out at Sandy Valley Ranch. <laughs> I know that place! Yes, where your kid brother mm -hmm. we've recruited mm -hmm. to uh, shoot the music video. He's complying. Uh, actually, as you walked in today, I was just reading the treatment for yes, the video. Yes, yes. And, and uh, so it's exciting. It's pretty Basically, good. the gist of it is this, you know, Santa Claus and the Killers have had a rough time okay. over the past few years. Right. This is a bit yeah, of a trilogy. Yeah, yeah. This is, right, this is the third one. This will yeah. be the third one, okay. and what happens on this third one is we finally set aside our differences uh, after, you know, several years of misunderstandings. Right, okay. And uh, this is actually going to be the tenth and final Christmas single The Killers do. Wow. Uh, I, this will be the third one I've been a part of, but every year the Christmas, uh, The Killers, have done a Christmas song. That's awesome. And the proceeds have gone to the Red Campaign. Amazing. So they've uh, generated quite a bit of money uh, for those guys, and and that's been a uh, that's been something they, that they've just always set aside time to do every year. But I think Brandon finally said, you know, this takes up so much time every year. We gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This will be the do last something, one. Yeah. They've already put an EP out, and this will be having ten songs done now. It'll be a full length album. Okay. So okay. That's quite a body of Christmas music. I don't think uh, any other band is actually. I wonder. I wonder if we could check and see if there's... I think we could check. I think Google might can have we, an answer for you. Can we wiki you. that over there? <laughs> uh, no, so so uh, they might have the record for most Christmas songs. Now, I'm sure Elvis has a beat, right? Elvis has a whole record of Christmas songs. I think probably so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Nat King Cole and a few other people like Damn. that. Well, that's right? all. That's all. Our, well, <laughs> but, you know, maybe they're not the, from Vegas. In the so modern they don't era. Count. How about in the modern era? In the modern era, they may be the ones, unless Taylor Swift sweeps in there and gets it this year. <laughs> she wins it all. Um, okay, so we know each other from back in the day. Uh-huh, we're both uh, lifelong Las Vegas natives. That's right. Correct? That's right. Yeah, you were here, you never left at any point. Uh, no, you know, I mean, I left for college and then never so, really lived here I again, truly, I, I really haven't left. I have grown up uh, downtown Las Vegas. Uh, I've, I live now across the street from where I grew up. I love uh, it. So Best thing ever. From 36 Which years. Which is right down the street yep. from my mom's house. Yep. yep. Uh, you know, I, I remember uh, your kid brother used to ride his big wheeler, <laughs> you know, down the street. And I, we used to pick on him. We'd say, hey, kid, you know. Uh -huh, of course. He was always very modest. Nice Rightfully kid. Rightfully so. Nice kid. Nice kid. Um, yeah. And you, yeah. It's, it's always fun. People are always curious what people do in Las Vegas if they're from Las Vegas. 
Um, and you have kind of an interesting history in your family in terms of choice of occupation and such. Should we share a little bit of that? Sure. You yeah. talk about my father. Your father. He's a uh, professional seven-card stud player. Yes. He moved to Las Vegas in 1974 to uh, play professional poker. Uh, he has uh, two World Series bracelets. At, Amazing. Uh, I guess various points in the 1980s, he was maybe rated, the, I think, the best in the world. And uh, the old man still got it, you know? The Apparently. Old, he's uh, 70 years old and he still plays 12 to 14 hours a day. And that's, and so the senior, I mean, you don't, because you don't think of this as a physical sport or something, but clearly the mind begins sure. to change. Sure, his his prime is behind him, Laura. Okay, okay. And, uh, as it happens But he to most still of has us. a, uh, uh, the old man still plays like, has a very competitive spirit. So he's out there playing still right now in Los Angeles, probably as we speak. That's right, there's Seven like night this small. Yeah, he plays at the yeah. Commerce Casino, which is the largest uh, casino in okay. the world. Really? So that's uh, that's what the old man so does. So not the house games? Okay. No house games. No more, okay. No, no. He did, play, here's a funny uh -huh, story. Uh -huh, he uh -huh. he played, there back in the 80s, there was a, a game that happened in LA. Okay. And dad would fly out to it. It was actually held by Larry Flint. Love this. So okay. Larry Flint, what he would do was, he would fly out all the best poker players mm -hmm. to Los Angeles. They would, uh, he would pick them up at the airport. They'd drive back to Larry's uh, mansion, um, and then all the poker players. This is the weird part. Would get haircuts. This is the weird part. Oh, okay. Is that weird? That's weird. So, so everybody gets haircuts. No hiding cards in there. And their they're back at Larry. Dues. So Larry Flint gives them haircuts. They have dinner, and then they sit down and play poker. And as far as I know, this game still possibly Exists. happens. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the largest seven card stud game in the world. I like that story. Um, so you chose not to go that route no. with your career. And you are known as the Las Vegas music, what, master? I don't know if, if you call him master, so you, 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 you know, <laughs> I, I don't like The to, mainstay. Uh, I'm a bit Is of a mainstay. Okay. I'll tell you, I've been, uh, I've been fortunate enough to somehow survive okay. uh, through music, mm -hmm. somehow, for... Mm -hmm. Wait, it's meaning personally survive? Survive, or pay bills. Okay, yep, pay, yep, okay. Eat. Uh huh. And, uh -huh. Uh, Provide not, for yourself. Not be homeless. Yeah. That, that, that to me that's is. That's amazing. Uh, that's a very successful feat since 1998 sure. uh, or so. Well, no. Really around 2001 is the last time I had a job, you know, In N Out Burger. Oh, and, I remember uh, yeah. In N Out Burger, yeah. So, yeah, In N Out Burger was the last one. Since then, I've company. been either running music venues, working for bands, or playing music for myself as a okay. DJ. I've DJed, I've been a karaoke yeah. host. I've been the band. You've been and, the band. Uh, <laughs> and I've, You've supported I've, the band. I've also been the doorman. Uh-huh. I've been the bartender, but... The bouncer? The, yes. Yes. Uh, during South by Southwest, I needed to make a little cheese, and I had to be a doorman okay. a few times okay. to, to survive. I think I've worked every position in the bar, you know. And then I took a couple of sabbaticals as a kayak guide in Alaska. I, I had never known this. You never knew that? I did not know this. In Alaska, where? Sitka, Alaska. Two summers okay. I spent, I was on a break from the killers. Yeah. And I needed to do something with that time. So I went up to Alaska and I, I took tours out on kayak guys, uh, tours through, uh, through the uh, bays up around Amazing. Sitka. Amazing. That's when you were not working out to look like Santa. I was still big. Yeah. <laughs> I was actually, I was the biggest I ever was then. I think it was all the red beans and rice. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Wait, but, so going back to the music mainstay. Sorry, yeah, yeah. No, no, I love the kayak, I love that. <laughs> and I know that you also gave tours at the Neon Museum sure. and sure, all this sure, sure, stuff. Sure, 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 sure. So you have a bunch of A little bit of Vegas happening. history. I think Vegas is part of me, it's part of my fabric. I, no yeah. matter how much I've tried to leave, yeah. and I know, you know, I've never been very successful. Right. So, you know, I, you know every time I, I think I'm out, they, they drag me it's right It's in your bones. Here. You're needed here. I think I'm needed, uh, you know, they called me to do the Lord's work and... Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, and you have, I mean, truly, sure. right? Yes. Yeah, so you make people uh, happy through music. Yes. So whether it's supporting other bands or absolutely, it's all doing part your of. Own. I look at more as like curation. Yes. And, uh, okay. Okay. You're, okay. You're curating, whether it be Cafe Roma, where. Uh, right. So there was that. I, I, I owned a coffee shop in okay. uh, the early two thousands, and that's actually where I met the Killers. But what I liked about what I did there is I was working with painters, musicians, sure. poets. And uh, that trans uh, such a special place. And that I transitioned mean. into you know working on the road with the Killers, and then coming home, I, I 
I, you know, in order to make a living, I, I figured out how to become a DJ. Right. And uh, then I learned how to be a karaoke host, and that was a lot of fun for a while. So I've uh, worked, like I said. So you, yeah, so you know the industry from all angles, sure. including having your own record. Sure, yeah, and yeah. I recorded that record. Halloween the, Town. Halloween yeah. Town. Uh, it came out in 2012. Okay. Uh, named the record uh, Zephyr Court. That was the mm -hmm. street I grew up on. Mm -hmm. And that came out in 2012. I worked on that record with uh, the Killers, members yeah, of Louis XIV, okay. the, the Shies, and uh, I. Uh, it's a great record. It was a collaboration. I truly love it. Thank you. Yeah, no. I mean, really, it's not just because it's you, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to blow some smoke up uh -huh, the guys. I do. I'm good at that too, but it's truth. Uh, no, that was, that was quite a process. It took about three years to make that record, which usually isn't the time frame you hope for. Right. But I was kind of asking for favors, and when you're getting things done it's for free, it it's takes a different a, thing. You're on a different mm -hmm, time schedule. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. I'd like to make another one as well, hopefully in the next year or so. I would like to hear that. Will you play a little bit for us at some point, maybe? Maybe. I'd probably My favorite play... memories are sitting around campfires at the ranch with you and your guitar. Okay. You have to bring it with our ride, like really. All right. Well, maybe Clearly. I'll see if I, if I happen to throw in the car earlier when I was packing up. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I, okay. I'll, I'll play something for you in a little bit. I like that. Uh, so yeah, I hope, hopefully I can get back in the studio, but I'm so busy with all these other projects right That's now. That's great. It'll be tough for the moment. So. And yeah, and so what do you think about the downtown Las Vegas concept and all that's happening there? This, I, this is kind of a loaded question for some people. So. Sure. So I'm very excited about what they've done because... Mm -hmm. and Those that have stuck around. And uh, definitely uh, Tony Shea specifically has done, you know, a lot for this city, uh, you know, uh, for better for the most part. Right, and right. I, I was, I was going to say for better or worse, but for, for the most yeah, part yeah, he's, he's done... He's done something good, and there's been some, I think, some hiccups along the way. But I don't know how you can come in and try to build a new city without, right, gotcha. without running into a couple problems gotcha. along mm -hmm, the way. Mm -hmm. I'd say. Anyways, mm -hmm. but uh, the the project I'll be working on is, you know, directly involved with them as well. I don't, you know, if you oh, want to, really? yeah, if you want to do anything downtown at the saloon. Gotcha. Okay. Uh -huh. So, uh, so obviously, I'm, you know, now going to be a beneficiary, right, of some of that investment downtown. So that's exciting. But and I, so and will you, you'll be bringing local acts sure. and acts from There's all gonna, over? I'll also, we'll be working with people from the Strip, from the Cirque shows. Okay, great. We'll Love be it. working with, uh, you know, national touring acts. Uh, we're trying to, you know, some of those things are, we're still in the very early stages. Mm -hmm. But before at the Bunkhouse, uh, bands like Built to Spill played there, uh, Brandon Flowers played mm -hmm. there, and uh, on and on and on. Uh, Bob Mould from Husker Du, Husker Du. Uh, and uh, and so we'll continue, uh, you know, booking some larger national acts, but mm -hmm. we'll focus on local things. Love it. And uh, bringing people over from the strip downtown too. So Love trying it. to figure out how to make that work in uh, a part of Las Vegas that's traditionally, you know, been overlooked. Overlooked. That's very kind. A kind way of putting that. Yeah. No. As a as a native, it, I, it's amazing coming home and seeing all the new energy and feeling all of that. Sure. And, these new creatives that and are of course, coming up. This is all in the area of town, like where we went to high school. Yep. And we'd go to lunch. And, yep. Uh, I mean, I specifically remember looking out uh, the window during government class my senior year and seeing, you know, crack deals gone right over right. right, you know. <laughs> And this very is raw. Very raw, and now it's it's you know you know, you got the the Bay Area coming in, gentrifying right. it. So you right. got this mixture of people happening, and it's it's, curious. Uh, it's interesting. It's, it's interesting to see what happens. But I guess you got that happening in San Francisco too, you right? I, I pretty much anywhere, but it's so yeah. it's so focused here, right? Yeah, it's because very it's such focused. a small block. I mean, the Strip is tiny. Downtown. And is I think smaller. as a Las Vegan, we're all so used to just being treated badly, and. Uh, and condescended upon that we're like that's amazing. We're so I think that's excited. what we kind of live with the defense, yeah. With yeah. A, some kind we're, of we're, a, we're all kind of defensive. We all have yeah. a bit of a chip on our shoulder as natives, and uh, you know we got that old cowboy kind of the wild west. Of uh, the wild west, survive. There's that scene in Casino mm. where they st where the old cowboy steps in, and Robert De Niro, you know, and he's trying to defend his his cousin. He's like, you know. You know, give my give my my, my 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 nephew a job, and he's like, he can't work here, sir. He's he's incompetent. And he says, you guys don't understand. We'll be here long after you're gone. That's right. So that's right. I think you're a cowboy. I think that's you. 
You're a cowboy girl too. Yeah. Well, actually, you left. So. You know, I left, but I it still lives here. In here. I come a lot. You can't take the desert out of the girl. No, you can't. You can't. Those tumbleweeds live forever. Yeah. And so, has anyone else from Roma from those days kind of made the it? The Killers big? actually first played there uh, when Brandon and Dave uh, first got together. They played open mic night. Okay. At Cafe Roma, and cool. at open mic night, at night they played Mr. Brightside. Oh my gosh! Stop. And Under the Gun. Amazing. Which, are, which Mr. Brightside, I believe they played at every single show. That was the first song they wrote oh, best, together. Best. Best. So, and a lot of their relationship uh, kind of uh, took a shape there at Cafe Roma. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that was actually. But are there any other acts? Is there anyone else? Even um, a poet? Or, sure. Well, you there's have also everyone, a, artists of all types. There's also Imagine Dragons. Uh, we worked with them quite a bit at uh, the Beauty Bar. And oh, Beauty Bar! Sure. Right. Okay. Uh, there's another uh, bar on. Uh, Fremont East is uh, is the beauty bar, and uh, Imagine Dragons actually played a number of their early shows. Yeah. Actually, geez, this is kind of a a big brag. Okay, do it, please. Not really. Bring it. I think Imagine Dragons opened up for Halloween Town. I guess they wouldn't call it a a, a brag. That's you know. amazing. <laughs> so That's a, amazing. Yeah, you need to be sharing that with the world. So I no, love it. and then we played, and then we played in, again later. And I think they were much bigger than me at this point. But I felt like I had to negotiate for something. It was right before they hit it big. And I, had, I negotiated for Halloween Town's name right. to be shown just as big as Magic Dragons. It. That was the only you know, power I had back then. Of course, I could never do that ever again. About the next day after that deal. That was a moment in time. It was great. Luckily, yeah. the promoter was pretty naive, and he went for my, my, uh, my barter at that point. So. At yeah. any rate, so, but actually we just saw Dan Reynolds uh, from Imagine Dragons at okay. uh, a Life is Beautiful Festival a few weeks gotcha. ago. Gotcha, okay, yeah. Uh, so we're all I good. I have not been to that yet. It's good, I've it's in its third things. year. We'll see if it makes it another year. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, they've been trying to do this festival now for three years. Okay. So we'll see if it lasts another. Yeah. But it was great. Everyone I know who goes sure. has, yeah. It was good, we went for three days. Uh, my favorite was uh, Future Islands played. Uh, Brandon Flowers played, and then okay. uh, the Killers came out and played during that. Mm -hmm. and that was very exciting, I think, for the crowd. Mm -hmm. And overall, I think life is beautiful has been a great thing for downtown Las mm -hmm. Vegas. And we'll see how if it. Uh, hopefully, I really hope it you know lasts. And yeah. Keeps um, so you're obviously the guy who knows everything cool to do in Las Vegas. Where would you send your best friend if they came to visit? Ooh, it depends on what their interests are. Now, Good answer. If. Uh, I was going to talk to a gambler, you know, or a poker player. I would send them obviously over to the Aria or to the Win. Oh, this like is that. obvious. Okay, the Aria or the Win. Okay. Right. Those are the big poker rooms in town. Okay. 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 Somebody who wants to, a little bit more culture. I tell them they have to go. Yeah. I think one of the top things people need to go now and do, and Laura, you need to do this. Is yeah. You need to go to the Neon Museum. I've never been. It's embarrassing. It's a, okay. It's. Probably the coolest way you can uh, look at Vegas as it used to be. And also the Vegas, I think, that you and I grew up mm. in. Um, there's going to be a lot of signs there from businesses you remember mm -hmm, and I remember. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's probably the most nostalgic thing you could beautiful. do on a beautiful fall day or winter day. Mm -hmm. And if you go at night, a lot of the signs mm -hmm. light up. So. As it cools Heaven. off here, you should go. And it's definitely one of the most interesting things you can do in Las Vegas right now. As far as nightlife, there's mm -hmm. a lot of great bars. I will be running the Bunkhouse Saloon, so obviously I'm going to mention that. We are sitting right now in another great bar, The Artifice. Love which, this place. Uh, the reason that it's for the past five years, it has been uh, a true melting pot of like very open-minded uh, liberal type. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no. It, 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 it's very much uh, part of the Las Vegas uh -huh. Arts District, which is where right. we're at actually right now. I mean, we're piggybacked onto so some during art galleries and stuff. During such. First Friday, we would be Kay. in the epicenter of, of First Friday. Yep. And... All around us are art galleries. And, and a so restaurant, I remember, nearby that was that great. That is going to be uh, the Crown and Anchor shortly. Okay. There's a restaurant next door. There's uh, Mingo. Mm-hmm. And I, think, I believe there's a few more businesses, but we're right in the middle of all the growth. And mm -hmm. over here is Main Street, which is maybe what some would consider 
the future Fremont really? East. Really? So, you know, as Fremont East has become developed by the downtown project, mm -hmm. now the cool kids are mm -hmm. heading to Main Street. Gotcha. Okay? Mm -hmm. Got to defend. So this is like East LA. Okay, you know, okay. The, the, the hipsters are moving I'm feeling east. it. A little dirty. But they're moving over to Main Street, mm -hmm. which I've always thought uh, should be the main entertainment drag in mm. Vegas anyways, for mm -hmm. locals. Mm -hmm. So right now over there, there's a great bar called Velveteen Rabbit. Yes, Where love. you can go get handcraft love. cocktails. Mm -hmm. they, make, they, mm -hmm. they make them with all fresh ingredients, mm -hmm. not just my Templeton rye. Which was delicious. Incidentally, they make many great drinks here. Yeah. I just, uh, I I'm a simple that. man with simple pleasures. Uh, maybe we'll You're have a, a whiskey cocktail later. Uh, sounds from good. Rob, our bartender back there. So I would tell you to go to the Velveteen Rabbit okay. for the best cocktail in Las okay. Vegas. If you wanted to see live music, I'd say come to the Bunkhouse. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I'll uh, give my competitors a shout out. Uh, uh, you might want to go to the beauty bar on any given night, uh, but uh, lately their scheduling has been, you know, live music seems to be taking a slight mm. decline, so we're going to try to bring that back. Great. There's also still a lot of great music over at the Cosmopolitan for the more mm -hmm. corporate types. Okay. Okay. I guess I should try to promote, you know, Vegas businesses, though. Another great place to have a good time, though, in downtown Las Vegas is uh, the Griffin. Yes, I love the Griffin. There's also a lot of great restaurants opening yep. up downtown. Yep, absolutely. Uh, Carrie Simon, who just passed, mm. has a great restaurant down on 6th Street in Carson. Unfortunately, he's not around anymore. He recently what passed away. What is the restaurant? Uh, Carson Kitchen. <gasps> which is still uh, a great, I think Why was, did I not realize that was his? That is my favorite restaurant yes. in town. Yeah, it was his. Oh my so, gosh. Uh, and he was always a big hero of mine too. They're so. obviously keeping the, the Carson's Kitchen going. Sure, okay, sure, yeah. sure. His, uh, his uh, partner, Corey Hartwell, is still Kay. running it for him and actually still expanding under, you know, and working on new projects. Yeah, but, yeah, great. Yes, but, uh, good shout was, out. That's a great one. Yeah, absolutely. So that's a great uh, shout out. There's a... Uh, some other new restaurants I haven't had the opportunity to try, but Therapy just opened on Fremont. Mm. Uh, and The Perch is supposed to be outstanding. Yeah, I've heard. Okay, okay. So there's some downtown picks for you. Ryan's has been awesome. Thank you so much. So good to see you always. Thank you. I love it. Been a treat. Been a treat for me too. Thank you. This has been Lara Dahl's Happy Hour. Cheers. Action. Welcome, this is Happy Hour with Lara. We are at the Artifice with the amazing Ryan Party, drinking a little Templeton rye. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Laura. How are you, darling? Fantastic. A little whiskey for you? Please, sir. Just a little touch up. There you go, just a little bit. Two <laughs> Thank you. Thank shots you. I appreciate of Templeton. that. There we, you go. we polish it off. There you know. <laughs> it's the good stuff. That's us. What are you going to do? Yeah, that's how, that was my first introduction. Then, uh, you know, I met Mark from The Killers when I was running the cafe. He was, at that point, he was... Roma. Uh, Roma. Yep, okay. Cafe Roma. Yep. And uh, Mark would come in for his sandwiches. And he was a very introverted guy. What's that called where you're scared to leave your bedroom? Oh. Is that agoraphobia? What is that? No, I, no, that's something else. Yeah. It's a phobia. It's a phobia of sorts. Uh-huh. And we can wiki that also. Wiki that up <laughs> and post. Maybe you can we'll put a little. We'll have it right exactly running at the bottom what here. What he is talking about. <laughs> actually, my hand's going right there. That would be perfect. Uh, and he hadn't left his house in over a year. And he came to Roma. He just started playing bass in this band. And, you know, I, I kind of helped him through ordering a tuna fish sandwich. Right. And gotcha. I figured out how he liked that tuna fish sandwich. Yeah. And that's how we became friends. So that, that's not exciting. But I love it. He'd come in every day, and then he learned to talk, and then next thing you know, he's in the killers. <laughs> <laughs>